All right, boys and girls, today we're gonna turn all of this into this 24 deep garage, 30 feet wide, eight foot walls, standard four pitch, nine foot door, nine foot door, seven foot tall, usual crew, me, myself, and I. Let's get building. Wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Of course the lumber was stacked wrong. I gotta dig my plates out. So I had to get all these studs out of the way. But I think what I'm gonna do is um, build and stack my walls. Get my headers. Got door headers. Uh, get all that stuff staged and ready to go for tomorrow. And then uh, lift everything. Get everything braced off. Okay, so the homeowner had this slab poured a couple years ago. I see his piecemeal in it. Couldn't afford it all at once. Don't blame him. We're a little short. Measurements aren't quite there, so we're gonna have to figure this out, square this up, knock these plates around a little bit. I'll get back to you. Check this out. So not only was the load built wrong, and the plates I need for my walls are buried under everything. One of them's completely snapped. Did they replace it? No. So I've got to call into the contractor to let him know. And these two by sixes are supposed to be 10 feet long and they are pre-cut nine footers. 104 and 5 eighths, 10 feet. It's close enough, right? Good grief. See that? Let's just randomly throw some eight footers in with the pre-cuts. Let's go big box store that for now shall remain nameless. This keeps up, I'm ranting them out. I don't know if you can see, but two by 12, nailed up, doubled up with a piece of OSB between, so we're three and a half wide. Can't win. Just started nailing up and blew the gasket out here. I have gasket stuff at home. I think I can do that, but this thing could probably use a rebuild anyway. But I do carry another gun, so I'm gonna go grab that. Inside corner. Galvanized nails for the treated plate because there is copper in the treated and it would be a dissimilar metal if it was just with steel and the steel will rot out so you got to have galvanized that go in the treated then up top usually just put regular nails in. It's windy out here and uh, I don't have my microphone, so deal with it. All right, all my walls are assembled. This one will be the front there that the header will sit on. This will be the middle that both headers will sit on. Here's the front wall to the left, the header will sit on, side wall, side wall, 
back wall, back wall, side wall, side wall with the door. Um, this is weird. My plates were wonky. I've got a 16 and a 14, but I had two 10s. So I've got to stand this section, stand this section, and then I'm going to fill those studs in. Here's a ridge that I dug out. 2x10 because I have 2x8 rafters. Uh, two foot on center. It's all crowned and laid out. This is a 16 footer, then I've got a 14 footer. Yeah, it'd be kind of a bear to set, but I'll get it. Here's my rafter. Four and a half inch eave overhang plus inch and a half makes six inch seat cut. Bird's mouth, as they call them. Ridge cut. So that's my pattern. I always pattern one so you don't you don't run off. Just pick one as your pattern and go with it. So now I've got uh let's see. 31 more of these to go. Battery's kind of dying on the GoPro, so I'll catch up to you when I get that done, I guess. Alright, half the rafters cut. Threw them back in the pile. It's getting a little later than I thought, and it's my wife's birthday, so we're going out to dinner. So I'm going to have to catch up with you tomorrow, but it won't be that long a wait for you guys. Good morning, guys and gals. On the job, we got some... I feel kind of hoarse. Um, we got some storms coming. First thing is going to be to get these walls up and braced off bigly. Gonna be braced off bigly. <laughs> that was bad, I'll cut that part out. Brace them off really good. We got 50 mile an hour winds coming. Um, that won't be good. <laughs> I've had that, I've had that happen before. So let me get set up to get rolling and then uh I'll stand some walls. I'll move you somewhere, get a different view here. It is warm, it is muggy, beginning of April, and a couple days from now it's supposed to snow. <laughs> Welcome to the Midwest. You get this closed in and then probably bolt everything down so we can start bracing up. Because I got no idea when this wind in the rain is coming, but wind's starting to pick up now. I don't want to lose these walls. That won't be good for business. Well, it's raining. The winds haven't gotten too bad yet, um, but kind of packed up for now. We're going to sit here for a second and see what happens. Not leaving tools out in the rain, and uh, I'm not working in it getting wet. On a day when you're being productive, and then it goes. <sighs> what can you do? Well, I survived the storms yesterday. The wind was not as bad as they had said it was going to be, but um, it did rain a bunch, so I didn't stick around. A uh, big wind storm supposed to be coming this afternoon, I guess. It's already pretty windy. It's like 40 degrees out now. It was like 60 something yesterday, 68. Now it's like 40. But it's a pretty nice day so far, so uh, we'll go after the headers, more of the top plates, um, then hopefully get my angle bracing on the walls, and then can maybe even get ceiling choice up. Uh, with the wind, I don't know if I'm going to put the uh, sheathing on. So 
We'll see. Yeah, it sucks. It sucks knocking off early yesterday, but I did get my taxes done. So there's a plus there. All right, headers are in. They were relatively light, it was kind of nice. Plus also being only a nine foot door. Headers are only nine nine, because you get three inches of bearing on either side, and then it'll have inch and a half of trim that the siders will wrap. All I've got to do now is finish up my top plates. These back walls have all been racked up, plumbed in. So we'll keep plugging away and then see what the weather is doing. Um, see how windy and crazy it is and hopefully it's not we we can keep keep jamming because uh, things are going pretty smooth so far catch up with you in a minute gotta lay out these walls 30 foot wall you need the special 30 foot tape let me show you what I got going here eve walls two foot on center rafters four foot on center joists so every other rafter will fall in between. That'll land on a stud, then we'll be in between studs and on a stud all the way down. And then gable walls just need to transfer the stud layout up because then gable studs will go all the way up, closing the gable. Still got beautiful weather, no wind yet, so I'm gonna keep banging away on this thing. I'm gonna show you how I mark gable studs. I mark the long points, so now I know how to measure. There's a center that's going to come right up underneath my ridge because that's 12 feet of a 24 foot wall. So this is a long point, long point, and so on down that way. You can see lines on this side of the X get past the ridge lines on the other side of the X. That way I can measure up and get my measurement, and I know everything I need to cut is a long point. Front walls brace nice and straight. These are two by sixes. They're the the rake boards going to go on the gable for trim, so I can use those up and uh, then put those on after the roof is sheathed and everything in the garage ain't going anywhere. Put two by four in the middle to hold them up so they don't sag. Now, 24 foot two by sixes going in. Ceiling joists. It's always fun. They're relatively straight and not twisted, so they shouldn't fight me too much. Well, let's find out.
Okay, we nail on the back because that wall moves still. And then we adjust on the front and nail it up. So y'all get the picture there. I'm not gonna subject you to uh, however many more joists there are. I'm not putting the end one in yet because we're at 30 feet. That means we have one at 28 and only leaves me two feet at the end for spacing and I need to get my ladder in for, uh, what do they call those things? Yeah, rafters. Um, so I'm gonna leave that one out until everything's up and then I'll put it in. So, catch up in a second. Just used some screws and threw some extra 2x4s up there to brace everything off. Because the wind is picking up and it's coming out of the west here. That hold everything so it doesn't twist. So now I'm going to take the opportunity to chop up the rest of these rafters and then I'll stack them on the ground in here stage them to stand up so I can actually install them. Once the rafters are in, we'll uh, reassess and, and see what the day brings. All right, I don't even know if you can hear me. Crazy windy out here. It took me a while to fight the tarp back on there. We'll get back after this thing tomorrow. Hopefully I have some rafters up. That'd be pretty cool. Right now, I think I'm gonna go try to find some food. I'm trying to intermittently fast and lose my belly. It makes me hungry. Back at it. Looks like we got rain coming again. It's cold again. We survived the windstorm. Everything's still here. It was 50 plus mile an hour winds ripping through here. So glad that's still there. Um, gonna get untarped and uh, start throwing some sheathing at this thing. Stick around to the end and I'll give you a uh, total cost on this. It's got a 30 foot wall and it needs four foot of shear bracing down here. Well, if we all stayed awake in math class in high school, we know that 30 feet does not divide by four. So I can't get a four foot sheet in there. I should have done this while I was framing up the wall. I was dumb and didn't think of it. So I put a stud in, it's four feet over from the end. So now we put a two foot piece of blackboard in there and then uh, OSB at the end. I get that cut and I'll show you once it's installed. So there we go, we got a shear bracing at each end, and then this garbage in the middle. I'm doing this for a contractor, and the homeowner wants to save some money, OSB is through the roof. I could imagine they're probably saving at least $40 a sheet, maybe? I haven't priced this uh, blackboard, Celotex, fiberboard, whatever you want to call it. I don't recommend it, I don't like it. But it does pass code, as long as you have your shear bracing in which we do now. So I'm gonna nail off the tops because we gotta be attached to the plate and I'm short 
I can't reach that, so I'm gonna use the ladder, and then I'll go through the inside, pound out all my misses, sheet up the rest of this. Get ready to uh, get some ridge props in, get the ridge up, and gable rafters, maybe. Weather's still not looking promising, uh, but I'm just doing what I can do because it's, what is it, like day nine on this job? Good grief, it's taking me forever. There's a bunch of misses because I was stupid and when you go on a two-footer then you, you're not on the same layout. I shot five nails out of that thing looking for, the, for, looking for the stud that wasn't there. I'm an idiot. Okay, I got these doors installed. I know you probably can't even hear me. I apologize, but to save on the blackboard, I had the two-foot rip from back there. So I was able to do a 12 inch piece and a 12 inch piece. Then I just cut the rest out of the door to piece in those spots above the door. Also, I wanted to install the door so it doesn't uh, disappear. We're not in the greatest neighborhood. Uh, then kind of killing time because we're still dealing with wind and wind advisories. I got the overhead doors trimmed out so siders can wrap that. I've got to disappear this bolt that is in the wrong spot. I went through, pounded out all the nails that missed. I really wish Masons would understand when you have a nine foot door that you have framing and you can't just put your bolts nine feet apart. The contractor stopped by and I was able to give him my opinion on this crap. We used this stuff 20 some years ago and it's it's even worse now. I mean, it's, it's practically not square. They try to give you lines on it and the lines don't line up. Oh, I still got, I got another miss right here to get that out. These stupid lumber prices are making building regressive at this point. We're going back to all the crappy cheap materials I almost put it on the uh, almost put it on the building inspectors for allowing this stuff but uh, it was an $800 savings to the homeowner by using this I don't know I mean if you're dropping 20 grand which he's not actually this concrete he had this concrete poured a couple years ago so obviously homeowners piecemealing this and uh, you know doing what he can when he can so Save 800 bucks, you save 800 bucks. Gives me a little headache and uh, I rained down retribution upon the contractor. Because <laughs> I was not happy. He caught me in a bad mood. Bad time. I'm going to brace this wall straight, put a block in, and run down to a, you know, a stake. Um, that way, I'll set my rafters coming from this end. And when I get my two sections of ridge up, I can get my angle brace in at this end and it'll be true and that'll hold until the sheathing goes on the roof. Pretty straight overall for having kind of crappy material. Now you can't see here. But I keep the straight plates for the eave walls and then I kind of use the best that's left after that for the gable walls. It makes straightening out the walls with the angle braces and the, the ceiling joists makes it way easier if you have the straight plates on your eave walls. Quick tip. So I got a uh, ridge brace, ridge brace or support, whatever, temporary, um, 
quick math. I think I might have pointed this out in a different video. Maybe not. Why don't you just go watch all my videos and then find out which one it was. 24 feet. So rafters are laid out for 12 feet because you got a rafter on either side, so it goes halfway. It's a four pitch, so that would be 48 inches overall of rise, but we have a two by 10 ridge. So that's nine and a quarter, it's like an inch and a half there that it comes down below the rafter. And then the rafter is sunk down another inch and almost three quarters. So rule of thumb for me is you would take the pitch, the run, so 12 foot run, four inch pitch, 48 inches of rise, then just subtract the four inches because the ridge is below the rafter and then the rafter sits lower because of the bird's mouth. That's how I figure out where to put those. It has failed me once, my math was off and the uh, ridge prop holder bracy thing was too high. That sucked, I had to lower everything and that was after my ridge was up and I had some rafters set, that was not good. I guess first thing tomorrow will be uh, lean these rafters up, get ready to set the ridge. Half day, half day, half day, half day, but you know, this job ain't terribly close to my house and you know, you know how cheap gas is. All right, guys, it's been a while. It's been a few days. It was uh, horrible weather. This roller coaster has been crazy this spring. And then uh, it was a weekend, we had Easter, but I'm all set up here. Rafters are blowing around. Got my ridge ready to go. All my rafters stood. I like to go through and figure everywhere where a sheet of OSB is gonna break and make sure I've got a decent straight rafter uh, with no bark on it there, makes life easier. Also, gable rafters I try to keep nice and straight too, so I have a nice straight uh, gable. I don't have to mess with moving a bunch of stuff. So. Luckily, it's early today, so I can go after this. As long as the wind doesn't cause me any tragedies, um, I should be able to, to get everything up and braced off. I couldn't, I couldn't do it before. I, it, these half days from the weather has been, been killing me. It's dang cold out right now. We actually had accumulating snow yesterday. And this weekend, it's supposed to be 83 degrees. And more snow next Wednesday. My intention is not to be here then. Uh, my intention was also to not be here now. <laughs> what can you do? This is this is my life. I... Okay, I st I ended up setting up my pick, and I think that it's probably going to help me out in the long run here. Um, my braces were about a half inch too high, so I had to lower them. That kind of sucked, but I just wanted to point that out. Um, but we're good. We're anchored up top. We get anchored down below. And then I think I'm going to go ahead, get a ridge prop in here and uh, angle brace on and have this completely solid because we're braced down to the, to the ground out there before I set my 16 foot section of ridge. Then it should start going together.
Okay, they're all set. Uh, while my pick is set up, I'm gonna run king post collar ties and get all my bracing down. That way I can just shift. It'll be good. Salami for a snack. Yummy. It is raining and snowing and sleeting and doing God knows what else. It's getting colder, more humid. So that's all set. I should be able to move on without much peril. <laughs> everything, everything up top, everything up in there is, is done now. So all my rafters are in uh, angle brace. And I ran a ridge prop because that's on layout, so that'll be a stud and that'll be a gable stud. So I got that in, so that's all braced up. Um, my king posts are in, nailed them at the bottom, and then kind of tugged the joist up to go with the crown, nailed them up to the rafter. You can see collar ties up there all the way down here. I've got the same. Ah, uh, that little 2x4 there is sticking out. I gotta move that. It's just laying there. But that's it now. I think next up I'm gonna throw some sheathing on this back. I uh, don't know if I'm gonna run all of it or not. I just wanna give it some strength. And I've got, you can see, that rafter is really twisted. And you see this one on the joist. You can see that one is really twisted. Those are gonna take some fighting to get straight. So I wanna get everything held up on the back first before I start messing with those. I wanna make everything as solid as possible. I start back here with a full sheet, which will get me to here, that's eight feet. Uh, another full get me to there. Another full get me to the joist right before the last joist. And that leaves me six feet to finish. Um, which gives me a two foot cutoff. And then because if I run a two, I end up with a four. A lot of times I like to run the four and end up with the two. So I can, you know, I, I can stair step it back then. These are 14 foot rafters, so I need three full runs of OSB all the way up, and then we'll have a rip. Let's see if there's a spot I can kind of get the camera set up and uh, sort of see how I pop the line up top, measure up at each end, pop a line, and then I put nails on that line. I can just push my first row of sheathing right up against the nails, tack it along the bottom, and then I can get up top and start wailing away on this thing.
Um, plan of attack tomorrow, run the rest of the OSB, probably even the rips. Then I can go right for the gables, that gable, that gable. So then that will be done. Once those two are done, all I have to do is pull these. Those are my Eve faces and run them. They'll be ready to go for a roofer. Everything else down below is done besides securing the door and installing the deadbolt. I'm gonna get out of here because I've gotta load up because I don't like this neighborhood and the fact that the yard's not fenced in. Uh, no one lives here. I'm not leaving, I'm not leaving any tools even if I were to lock them up. So I gotta load up. It's gonna put me well after six o'clock getting home. It's a pretty decent day. I gotta get home and eat. Take a couple Motrin. <laughs> Sucks getting old, man. I'm loading up. Probably getting out of here. If anything pops into my brain, I'll check back in with you. If not, it'll probably be tomorrow morning. Bit of a late start today. Had to run to the sheriff's department and uh, renew my pew pew license. Got here and the homeowner was here talking and trying to get set up real quick here. I'm um, going up top, gonna get this knocked out and then uh, pull the ladder, ladders in the pick down so we can start buttoning up uh, gables. So without further ado, I'm getting set up and get up top. Um, I'll try to run the camera or I won't and you will see it or you won't and then I will update you after that. feels crazy sketchy to me. <laughs> A lot of potential energy going on there. But, you know, whatever. All right, gable time. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six sheets that are gonna go in this gable. So we're gonna start right in the center and go out. I measured up, 53 inches would be that cut. 412 pitch, so every four feet you come down 16 inches because that's four times four is 16. So we're at 53, 37, 21, five. I have this side cut and staged. What I like to do, these 24 footers are really nice because you start in the middle and go out. Take two sheets, flip them opposing each other, and then just make a single cut and that gives you both sides. So I've got my line popped for my big piece, second piece, smaller piece. That's it. I'm going to get these cut and out of the way, then I can throw a OSB up here and that way I can uh, pile all my gable studs up there to cut and we'll be rolling get these gables closed in. Here's my measurements. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven per side. So you grab like eight studs 
and you pull everything and make your cuts, your long point cuts on the first set, it should give you enough leftover that you can then pull off those long points and cut the square cuts for the other side. It should. Let's go. Look at this, I got a major boo-boo. Just 
supposed to be a spring there. So now that safety will go back and just stay there. This is going to be fun. That's about it. That is a 24 by 30 garage, pretty standard, uh, six inch eave overhang, just a rake board, so a zero overhang on the gables, uh, 412 pitch on the roof. Um, it did have two doors as opposed to one 16 foot overhead door, uh, service door, no windows, and we even replaced the OSB with the blackboard to save cost and you made it either all the way to the end or you skipped to this part because you wanted to see the cost of it. Now I built this for the contractor that I do the bulk of the, the big framing jobs. Uh, those videos are usually for the same contractor. Uh, this did have concrete already but we're gonna back up and pretend the concrete wasn't there uh, let's see, this was spring 2022, several months later that I'm getting the video done, but spring 2022 material costs were still through the roof. This would have cost, with concrete, about $37,000, give or take. Now, concrete is a large plurality of that cost. Um, my labor is really, really little. But, hope you enjoyed the build. I've got other builds that go into detail on different things. If I went into detail on this whole garage build, uh, it would have been two hours long. I had it down to an hour and a half and then had to remove another half hour out of it just to make it halfway palatable for you guys. So, thanks for watching. Go check out this video right here because YouTube thinks you need to see it. interesting.